My first GoPro was the Hero 2, and my last one was the Hero 7 White, which gave me so many problems that I just left the GoPro party altogether. With the release of the Hero 10 Black, I've jumped back in to see if maybe this time, it's a keeper. Let's take a look. The build quality is absolutely fantastic. There's a large display on the back and a smaller one on the front, which is just big enough to be useful for a bit of vlogging. Much like my old boss, it's heavy and super dense. And when I say heavy, I mean it's the heaviest action camera I've used so far. At 150 grams, it's 20% heavier than the Osmo Action, more than half the weight of the Sony RX100 Mark V, as heavy as 5.5 Insta360 GO 2s, or 67% heavier than the GO 2 in its remote charging case. So when you wear this on your head, you'll feel it. It's also big, so big that it doesn't fit the gimbal I got for my old GoPro, so that's out. But with that weight comes the most impressive feeling of quality and toughness. Unlike my hamster, it doesn't squeak or creak when squeezed, and it feels like it's built to be a survivor, unlike poor Bubble who's now buried under a shrub in the front garden. The body is completely waterproof without needing a case, so if you're into water sports or hiking in the rain, this has you covered. As with the previous couple of GoPros, it has these built-in flip-out thingamajigs for mounting, and I like them a lot. But honestly, I'm getting a bit tired of this ancient old mounting system, and I'm a bit disappointed that after 10 iterations, they still haven't put a tripod socket on the bottom, because tripod sockets make me a better person. Everything is controlled with these two buttons, which are stiffer than my cousin's excessively gelled hair. But that's not such a bad thing because you won't accidentally press the record button and film the inside of your pocket. And as this camera can be set to turn on and start recording with a single press, accidental recording is something you'll want to avoid. Just like my cousin. It can take photos, and the photos look absolutely fine. They're fine. How many of you are going to use this camera to take photos regularly anyway? Probably somewhere between zero and none. Unfortunately, it doesn't really offer full manual control over the exposure. It does let you choose shutter speed, kind of, but the slowest option is 1 125th of a second. So having control over long exposures is not possible. Your only option is to use the night shot mode, and that's all automatic. One glitch I noticed is that when taking night shots, I set the camera up so the composition looks perfectly level on the screen, but when it finishes taking the shot, it's tilted to the left, and it does this a lot. Stabilization is the main standout feature here for me. Hypersmooth is phenomenal, and it keeps getting better. It's so good that for everything but low light shots, I'm starting to think there's no need for mechanical gimbals anymore, at least for small action cameras like this. This does almost as well and in some cases better than an Osmo Pocket, and there are no moving parts. Horizon Lock is my favourite mode and the one I film with the most. It's absolutely amazing. Video quality is superb. It can record in a wide range of resolutions from 1080p to 5.3k. The bitrate is set to the lower of the two options by default, so make sure you change this to high as soon as you get the camera. The default colour profile is quite saturated and high contrast, and it looks good in some scenes, but often it's a bit overcooked for my personal taste. I find it crushes the black too much and sometimes overexposes the whites. I tend to keep it on the flat setting, which is a log-like profile, and then correct it to my taste in post. Dynamic range is good for a small sensor like this, and it does a really good job of dealing with direct sunlight. I like shooting into the sun a lot and some small cameras just can't cope with that, but it's no problem for the Hero 10 Black. There are lots of options for field of view, from narrow all the way to super view, and with stabilization turned off you can get the widest view, and that can get some really interesting and fun shots. This is where the camera starts to show its weakness in a pretty big way. With all forms of stabilization turned off, it's actually pretty decent in lowish light. But with stabilization turned on, it is nice and stable, but the image quality turns into a bowl of mashed potatoes. And I hate mashed potatoes. It's bad enough that I would consider the footage to be pretty much unusable, and there's so much software noise reduction happening that buildings start to look like oil paintings. Unfortunately, this is just a limitation with software stabilization. 
If you look at this seam shot I took with the Pocket 2, it's worlds apart in quality, thanks to its old school mechanical stabilization. The GoPro can't really compete with that. And in fact, I recorded the same clip with the Insta360 GO 2 using the same resolution and frame rate. And although it struggled a little bit with the stabilization, it actually did a much better job with the quality than the GoPro. So it seems like GoPro still have some work to do here. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you'll know that for me, an important feature of any camera is its slow motion capabilities. I like making music videos and slow motion is crucial for that kind of work. And the Hero 10 Black does not disappoint, offering not just 4K 60, but 4K 120 and even 2.7K 240. That's wild. The slow-mo files keep their original frame rate, so 240 frames per second keeps all those frames and you can then slow it down in post to 30 frames per second for eight times slow motion. The quality does take a significant hit when filming in frame rates as high as 240 and by the time YouTube crushes the quality even further, it doesn't look amazing. But that's true of any tiny sensor camera that can do this high a frame rate. That doesn't mean you can't get some pretty cool shots though and it's much better than the slow motion on any of my other action cameras. The really special thing here is that you can have full stabilization and horizon lock even at 240 FPS, something no other camera I've used can do. It's quite amazing. I don't tend to use the audio from my cameras because most of my footage is for music videos, but the mics on this are quite good. This is an audio test of the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Time lapses are always fun to do, even though they take a long time to capture, and the Hero 10 Black does it well. Setting up the shot is easy and intuitive. Again, there is sadly no manual exposure control, but you can lock the exposure by long pressing the screen, which is at least better than auto exposure. And of course it can also do hyperlapses, which are pretty fun. Battery life is more than enough for my typical needs. In my test at 4K30, it did well. This time will be reduced or increased depending on what settings you use and how often you have the displays on. There's an app that lets you preview and control the camera remotely via Wi-Fi. Like many of these camera apps, it has a few annoying ads here and there for their other products and services, and it encourages you to create an account every time you start the app. It also takes quite a while to connect to the camera, so I don't use it very much unless I have to. I think camera companies need to work on making their apps a bit less annoying. Stop nagging me to create an account every time I load the app, or to store my files in your cloud. Yes, I know you want my personal data, and I know you want to track and log everything I do, everything I say, and every time I fart, but I just want to use my camera. 
In terms of reliability, this has been so much better than my Hero 7. Every once in a while when I connect it to my computer to transfer files, nothing happens, but I just reboot the camera and then it works fine. And once, it froze while I was taking a photo, and I just pulled the battery out and restarted the camera. Aside from that, so far during the last few weeks of daily use, it's just worked. I have heard reports that the camera can overheat when shooting in 5.3K, but I don't use that resolution because my computer can't handle the files. Another disappointment is that for some reason 2.7K30 isn't available and neither is 2.7K24. If it can do 4K30, 5K30 and 1080p30, I don't understand why it can't do 2.7K30. My PC has a really hard time editing 4K or higher footage and with the global GPU shortage that's not going to change anytime soon. So I use 2.7K instead. But with this camera I can only get 60, 120 or 240 FPS in that resolution. For an action camera, there's really not much more I could ask for here. It's built like a tank, it's waterproof, the video quality is top notch, and the stabilization and slow motion are outstanding. It has a fixed everything in focus lens, which is great for action shots because nothing will ever be out of focus unless it's really close to the lens. But if GoPro could make a camera like this, but instead of having a fixed lens, they could use a fast variable aperture lens like the Pocket 2 to let me get some background separation, I would abandon my Pocket 2 in a heartbeat and just use this. I think they've done an exceptional job with this camera and I think it lives up to the praise it's getting. If you want to see how it compares to the Pocket 2 and the Insta360 Go 2, those videos are coming soon. If you find this video useful or interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.